Okay, just give some seconds to all the guests to enter the webinar. In the meantime, hi everyone, I'm Francesco from, uh, of course, Mood Solution. I will host and introduce this uh, webinar, then leaving the floor to Matteo and Martin, our guests for today. So just wait another 30 seconds and then I think that we can start. Okay, I think that uh, we can start this webinar. So welcome everyone. Welcome to the new Move Solution webinar, Dynamic Structural Health Monitoring, New Insight and uh, Innovation. Today, we will focus on uh, uh, basically our portfolio sensor for dynamic monitoring, along with some very interesting colleagues and guests. I remind you uh, that if anyone has questions, you can write down them in the question and answer box during the webinar. And at the end, we will dedicate, allocate some time to respond to all the questions that we have. So let's begin introducing today's speaker. As I already told you, I'm uh, Francesco, nice to meet you all. I'm key account manager at Move Solution for the UK market and for the Nordics. And I will be handling this introduction of the event. Next, we have Matteo Macanti, engineer Macanti. This is a telecommunication engineer in our team here at Move Solution. Who will that we will who will delve into the features and functionalities of our SHM accelerometer and about the model analysis of structure that can be performed with our device. Then we uh, we unfortunately Ewald Natush from Helbesoft won't be here for uh, an inconvenience dur during some traveling. Uh, by train, he was in Berlin in a smart city convention. He gets some delays, so he will not join today's webinar, unfortunately. But his part will be covered also to uh, by Martin Lehmann, our special guest from the uh, Fraunhofer uh, Institute. That is, uh, he is a research associate at this institute uh, that conducted this super interesting test on our vibrometer that he will uh, explain uh, uh, at the end of the webinar. So going on with this uh, introduction, who is what what is Moob Solution? Um, for those who may not be familiar with us. Move Solution is a trusted leader in the field of smart structural health monitoring. Our wireless system offers remote, continuous, and comprehensive analysis of the health of structure. So as by integrating uh, cutting edge technologies uh, and um, internet, the internet of, internet of Things, so the IoT technology, within the structural health monitoring practice, we promote more sustainable and resilient uh, infrastructures. Our mission is to empower our client with insights for a uh, like preventive monitoring approach. We provide organization with actionable data to ensure the safety and the performance of the valuable assets. By combining innovation with industry knowledge, we are committed to contributing to the development of smart cities, driving positive changes in uh, the communities. Our system is a, a wireless battery powered system communicate, that communicates using the LoRaWAN protocol. Our sensor transmits measurements to our gateway which is the only part of the system that needs to be powered by the electrical grid or that can be powered by solar panels and uh, batteries. The gateway then, using a SIM card, sends all the data using the 3G and 4G network to our servers. Then, from our servers, 
the user can choose to utilize our innovative IoT platform for the uh, data analysis and visualization or to integrate all the data from the move sensors into their own software solution through the API, the MQTT, and or the FTP. So the move solution, what does, uh, what challenge can the move sensor and the move solution approach? Through our system, is it possible to address every monitoring challenge? In fact, we offer optimal solution for static SHM, dynamic SHM, and geotechnical and environmental monitoring. So basically, our system is like a modular system where you can have just sensor for the static, just sensor for the dynamic, just sensor for the geotech and environmental, or a combination of the all of three together to get all the most useful insight from your area, building, construction site, bridge, or whatever you need to monitor. When we're speaking about static SHM, the static SHM focuses on the long-term behavior of structure and is particularly useful for infrastructure subject to gradual load changes over time. When we're speaking about geotechnical and environmental monitoring is the type of monitoring that involves measuring environmental factors that can affect the stability of a structure or a site, including soil movement, uh, groundwater levels, and maybe changes in the soil's chemical condition. Same thing for the environmental monitoring happens when maybe we are talking about wind speed, wind direction, and all the weather part of the monitoring of a, of a site. Then finally, we have the dynamic SHM that is the main subject of this webinar. Dynamic structural health monitoring is used to handle dynamic loading, such as uh, maybe people walking, uh, wind, waves, traffic, blast, or maybe earthquakes even. This is the type of analysis, this, sorry, this type of analysis is suitable for structures subject to fast impacts involving frequencies, vibration, dynamic displacement that can be uh, measured with our system using our brand new sensor called the DDS that we will show to you later. And with the accelerometer, instead, we can get the maybe acceleration and the modal forms that uh, engineer McCanty will talk about to you later. Dynamic monitoring involves continuous sampling where sensors continuously measure the environment and information is stored when a peak is detected. So unlike static monitoring, the data is recorded for a few seconds before, during, and after these peaks, resulting in the collection of, at the end, much more data. As you can see, we have basically some examples of uh, application that we had with our uh, dynamic uh, portfolio of sensor. The first one it was the dynamic monitoring of a hospital after the very big earthquakes that happened in Turkey. This hospital was in Hatay and the work were carried out by Amman Engineering. Basically the earthquake destroyed a very large number of buildings, including a large public hospital entirely. And our devices provide key structural information on two remaining hospitals, one public and one private, and helps the staff of the hospital to be more confident and more eager to come back into the uh, damaged buildings to work. Then on the side, on the right, we have the dynamic monitoring of a tunnel near a construction site. This project is located in Newcastle and was carried out by Academy Geomatics that alongside with Terra Measurement and Encompass Survey are our technical partners in the UK. 
Academy Geomatics in this project in order to monitor 155 meters of a running tunnel used an automated total station system, uh, choose an automated, uh, an automated total station system and divided the, the, uh, the tunnel into like 18 sections. Monitoring prism were placed around the cross section to detect any uneven movement. And then tilt sensor, our tilt sensor were used in the ventilation tunnel where a total station was not feasible. Each cross section of the 20, eight meter long ventilation tunnel at the three tilt sensor to detect the formation influenced by the construction site above. Accelerometer sensor then were installed at both ends of the ventilation tunnel for model analysis and FDD functions. The move solution cloud platform was praised at the end for its performance. Two accelerometers and a vibrometer were installed in the running tunnel and in the ventilation tunnel to enable the dynamic monitoring of the pole structure. So let's speak about these sensors. So let's start with the dynamic displacement sensor, the DDS. The XDEC sensor, now called dynamic displacement sensor, so DDS, is a wireless device that remotely monitors the dynamic displacement and frequencies of infrastructure. The DDS measures the displacement of a structure from its initial position due to dynamic forces. It's typically represented as a distance in millimeters, and it provides information about how much the infrastructure moves and in which direction. The frequencies measure the rate or speed at which structure vibrates, at which a structure vibrates or, or oscillates when subjected to dynamic forces. They are expressed in Hertz and provide information about how quickly the structure is vibrating. Monitoring dynamic displacement and frequencies of a structure help assess the uh, help assess the structural response to dynamic forces such as maybe strong winds, machinery operation, heavy traffic or earthquakes, and can provide valuable insight into the structural health and integrity of the uh, infrastructure during such events. So what's, what's changed from the deck from its older version? First of all, the dimensions. The DDS, compared to the deck, has a more compact design that facilitates its installation and using a variety of different environments, including maybe more critical and regulated site, such maybe railway, tra railway trucks application. Also, with the older version, it was required to know in advance whether the sensor needs to be installed on the floor, on the wall, on the ceiling. Now, with the DDS, there are just two versions of the device instead of six versions like the deck before, one horizontal and one vertical for the vertical displacement. That is, of course, much more easier because you just need at the end, since our sensor will come with the steel plate within, you just need to rotate the sensor on the steel plate, and you can choose your mounting uh, direction. So you just need to change the direction of the support that you see to install the device where you want. For example, the floor, the wall, the ceiling, and wherever you like to put it. Then, still, of course, speaking about the dynamic portfolio of our system, have, we have the vibrometer, the wireless vibrometer that is the like uh, kind of the protagonist of this webinar, thanks to the interest, super interesting test conducted by Martin, is able to measure the velocity of the point where it is installed, uh, providing a complete analysis of the frequencies and amplitude of the vibration. The vibrometer performs real-time and remote vibrational analysis. It understands if the vibration and the stresses are caused by construction site, uh, the, sorry, 
understand if the vibrations and stresses caused by construction site close to the monitored structure exceed the values set by the legislation in force. All these sensors also, the DDS, the vibrometer and the accelerometer then record also temperature are of course battery powder and they use LoRaWAN wireless communication protocol. Then to conclude the dynamic part of our system, we have the accelerometer that engineer McCanty will talk about later. The accelerometer can measure the acceleration of the point where it is installed on the three axis with very high resolution. All of these accelerometer can be perfectly synchronized with each other. Thanks to this feature, it is possible to measure the vibration frequencies and carry out a model analysis of the structure. Like the other device, of course, is fully wireless, battery lasts for years, and in relation to the transmission frequencies timed, um, uh, uh, the, 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 the device can be set to work or with a threshold acquisition or with a schedule something, sampling acquisition or both at the same time. Also carrying on board a temperature sensor inside. So after this, maybe too long introduction, I will leave the floor to Matteo that will talk to you about the accelerometer and the model analysis feature of our system. Okay, thank you, Francesco. I'm going to present. Okay. So, Hi everyone, I'm Matteo Maccanti. I'm a telecommunication engineer and I'm working on um, data analysis and data science. Uh, today, uh, I'm talking about uh, model analysis and uh, SHM from sensor to automatic cloud algorithms. Um, uh, I, I started with a, um, a short introduction to model analysis. Model analysis is the study of the dynamic properties of structure. Uh, the aim is to uh, carry out uh, the model properties of uh, the structure uh, as number of frequencies, model shapes, and damping ratio. Um, here we have a, a, a timeline uh, of the innovation step of model analysis. We started with IMA. Uh, between 80s and 90s. Um, we moved in the last decades to uh, OMA. Um, and thanks to the machine learning boom and the uh, improvement of uh, the data, data science technique, um, we uh, now arrive to AOMA. AOMA stands for uh, automated OMA. Um, here we have a short comparison uh, between the two main uh, strategies uh, to perform model analysis. Um, the first one is IMA, uh, that stands for Experimental Model Analysis, and OMA, uh, Operational Model Analysis. Uh, the main difference is that IMA is based on input force vibration. So uh, we need to solicit the, the, the structure uh, with a uh, control force, uh, and we are going to evaluate the output to characterize the, the system behavior, the, the structural behavior. Um, OMA is, based, is only based on uh, ambient noise vibration. So uh, it, it is called uh, only output technique. Um, the main advantage about IMA is that uh, the, import, the, 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 the input of the system is a control, uh, is a control force level, um, and we can uh, identify the nonlinear structural behavior. The main disadvantage uh, are for sure the uh, temporary interruption of structural functionality, and we, uh, we need an, ex an expensive setup and uh, instrumentation. Um, the main advantage, the main OMA advantage uh, is that 
it, it is very quick and cheap testing procedure. And the dynamic characterization of, of the structure um, uh, could be done um, uh, under operating condition. Um, the main disadvantage is that uh, we, we need a system linearity assumption and we usually have a superposition of excitation uh, sources. Um, why we move uh, to o, AOMA? Uh, AOMA stands for automated OMA. So we, we are going to perform OMA in a completely automatic way. Um, we can reduce uh, the operator intervention. We reduce the need of a skilled professionals in case of continuous monitoring. Um, we can improve the reliability of vibrational mode classification. Uh, we can generate clearer uh, model results. Um, Move Solution has developed uh, many kinds of uh, sensors, but today uh, I'm focusing only on accelerometer because uh, it is specially, specially designed for uh, model analysis um, because it has one uh, feature that is very, very important um, because all the sensors are wireless, wireless synchronized. And uh, the synchronization is very accurate, up to uh, 500 microseconds. Um, uh, now I'm, talk I'm talking about uh, our automated DOMA algorithm. Uh, our algorithm uh, has these, uh, the, the following characteristics. Is fully, it is fully integrated on cloud. It is fully automated. It, it is scalable flexible and reliable. Um, today, I can't uh, explain all the, the step of our, of our technique, but I, I would like to focus only in the three main phases of this uh, algorithm. Um, the first one is the, the daily processing. So every day, uh, we are going to collect all the acceleration data and we, um, we used um, uh, this acceleration to uh, calculate the frequency domain decomposition. Uh, that is, that it is able to um, carry out uh, the um, uh, daily model parameters of the structure. We when we, we, we have a sufficient amount of, of data, uh, of daily model parameters, we start with the training phase. The training phase, um, with the training phase, we, we are able to uh, train our intelligent uh, algorithm to uh, identify, recognize, and classify the only the vibrational mode of the structure. Um, and the, the, the algorithm is, is, is also able to uh, discard all the um, spurious mode uh, related to, uh, for example, um, mathematical error or um, uh, estimation error on, on parameter. Um, these vibrational modes um, are labeled, labeled um, and um, they are used to uh, track and to monitor the vibrational mode during all the monitoring period. Uh, so we have the, the final phase, um, the tracking phase, uh, where we, we want to, uh, to track the variation uh, of the uh, vibrational mode identified by the, by the algorithm. Um, here we have some results uh, of one of our uh, case study. Uh, on the left, we have the model frequencies time series. And on the right, we have the related, the correlated average uh, model shapes. Um, but um, why are we doing this, this model analysis during the time? Because we would like to find um, any kind of anomaly, uh, structural anomalies. Uh, so we are integrating uh, two, uh, two more blocks uh, on our uh, flow um, that, 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 that are uh, the temperature depuration and the anomaly detection. Um, 
uh, how um, they they perform the the, the processing. Um, uh, so this is uh, another another uh, case study. Um, on the left, we have the time series of model frequencies, and on the right, we have the time series of temperature. Um, as all the mechanical system, uh, also structure, uh, are affected by uh, the temperature. So we can uh, clearly see uh, the, the seasonality effect the, of the temperature on the uh, vibrational mode. Um, we would like to depurate this effect to um, uh, identify uh, any kind of anomalies um, on the on the on the vibrational mode. So we 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 perform that um, taking uh, as an input the temperature over the the. Uh, the, the period, uh, the, the monitoring period, and the vibrational mode. Um, and we compute uh, all this information uh, inside a, a temperature depuration block. We use uh, many kind of uh, approach uh, uh, called uh, depuration models. And after the uh, temperature depuration, we can see on the, on the right um, a very flat tracks. So all the tracks are um, depurated from the effect of temperature. Starting from the depurated traces, we move to uh, an anomaly detection uh, block. Uh, this block pro pro probably is the, the, the most important one because um, starting from the de depurated traces, uh, we want to highlight uh, any kind of anomalies. Uh, so we use two different approach uh, called control chart and change point detection um, to highlight uh, the uh, anomalies point. Um, we use um, uh, um, a, a common statistical index named uh, T, um, T um, and uh, we would like to, to uh, mutual validate the, the results of these two techniques to uh, um, send any kind of, of information, of important information to the final user, to the final uh, customer. Um, here in, in this slide, I, I'm, I'm showing, uh, showing um, uh, a case study that is healthy. So we, we you, you can see, um, uh, a very small part of points uh, that um, exceed uh, the the threshold, the, the the red threshold, and you you don't find any kind of um, uh, change point in the second in the bottom at the bottom of the uh, of the of the slide um, because the, the the structure is healthy. Um, I, I can also show you a, a damaged case study uh, differently to the previous one. Um, at one at uh, in a specific period, um, we we induced a damage on the structure. Uh, so uh, you can see that uh, starting from a, a specific period, all the points all the points um, uh, exceed the threshold. Um, and also the on the right the change point detection um, is able to detect some critical points um, that could be structural anomalies. Um, for sure, the the upper tracks uh, have um, a, a, a huge variation, but. As you can see, also in the in the uh, lower uh, track, uh, you have a uh, identification of an of anomaly um, that could be uh, a damage. So this this um, this approach is very important because uh, could help uh, the the technician to um, to identify uh, any kind of uh, uh, structural anomalies. Okay, so thanks you, thank, thanks 
and uh, I so we can move to Martin. Thank you, Matteo. So thanks for the introduction and uh, for the opportunity to talk before this audience. So good afternoon, everyone. Um, usually, as um, already indicated, Ewald would do the introductory session of what we were doing here in Dresden. Um, so I will try to quickly talk about um, introduce Ewald in his absence. So here at Fraunhofer Institute um, IIS, we are building up a, a laboratory environment for the qualification of smart sensors. Um, I will show you a bit later in my slides what this entails exactly. Um, and we are looking for industry partners or uh, customers. Um, to actually provide our service to. So um, we are, um, we're stumbling upon Ewald's company on LinkedIn and approached him, um, thought like, yeah, um, LoRaWAN uh, sensor networks are a really interesting use case because it's, as you just learned, extends or it scales very quickly. Um, and uh, Ewald was interested and we talked about our laboratory um, uh, test bed and he said, um, what do you think if I just come over and we look at it together and uh, quickly we, we, we found the mode and uh, took, uh, he took the sensor of move solutions with him and we spent the day together in the lab and I'm going to show you what the results were. And actually, Ewald was so uh, excited about this meeting that he produced a nice video on LinkedIn, which I want to share with you very quickly because it gives you a really nice overview um, of what we're doing. So I hope you can see uh, and hear everything. So this uh, was very exciting for us to get a feedback like this from a customer. So we think we are on the right track. And I want to give you a quick overview of what our lab is uh, comprised of and what we want to do with the lab. Um, so we are have roughly four fields of interest uh, for a lab environment. Uh, first, we want to use it for sensor selection and we um, need to acquire ground truth, ground truth data, um, also with a 3D scanning barometer. Um, we want to handle and help with energy management of sensors um, and uh, investigate where this can be optimized. Um, we do the physical in integration. So once we have the sensors and the ground truth data, we can reproduce them on the shaker in the lab. And ideally, in the end, we're going to use all this environment and data for the actual training and validation of smart sensors. And in this um, presentation, um, I'm roughly concentrating only on those two fields. Um, of expertise, which we, we're using to um, do some experiments with the vibration sensor from the solutions. So this is a quick overview of our test stand. Um, so when we start from the right, we have a 3D scanning vibrometer. Uh, you can see three uh, scanning heads, uh, so you can actually 
get the data in all three room directions, um, which is really helpful for um, investigation on uh, PCBs, which are usually not meant for vibration excitation. Then we have climate chamber where we can drive uh, the entire shaker and the DUT up to temperatures of, I think 120 degrees is what the shaker is capable of. Um, and then there's some more hardware to drive the shaker with. Um, it's still in the build-up, so it doesn't look very, very fancy, but it's an experimental environment, which we are um, continuously improving. So how did we go on um, with this um, sensor? Because as you can see on the left-hand side, the natural mounting surface of the shaker is a proprietary one um, with a hole pattern of, of four holes. And the adapter coming with the sensor is not directly compatible with this one. So I had a very um, keen student who was designing a 3D structure um, as a um, mounting adapter. Um, and we did some um, initial modeling in the frequency uh, realm before, so we could make sure that for the frequencies we're interested in, this actually translate the, the shaker's excitation to the sensor. And this is how it looks like on the, on the shaker installed. And when we apply the sensor, this is a very nice um, fixture which even allows for some, some adjustments um, to balance the entire system. And of course, what we are all interested in are the results. So we did some initial measurements with the uh, laser vibrom vibrometer. Um, and you can see um, during the initialization phase, you can actually see um, all three laser dots. So those are pilots, oh, sorry. Those are pilot lasers. Um, the actual measurement laser is in the infrared region, so you couldn't uh, see them, uh, but it has a very high resolution um, down to nanometer scale. And um, on the uh, top image on the right-hand side, the graphs uh, is actually showing some uh, really nice resonances of the um, admitted of the uh, top case, the top surface of the casing of the sensor. Um, I think the actual sensor chip is down at the at the bottom, um, but we weren't allowed to open it. <laughs> so we started with this one, um, but this is in the frequency region up to six kilohertz. And as I got informed, the actual um, measurement region of the sensor is much lower. It has a sampling rate of uh, roughly 500 samples per second. So the interesting region is here in the, uh, from zero to 250 Hertz, uh, where it looks much smoother. And uh, this is just to, to assess, do we get any problems? Are we actually expecting any anything? Uh, just from the physical mounting, uh, which doesn't seem to be the case, uh, not to a big extent at least, and can also produce some some nice pictures of what uh, resonances actually mean. So you can, um, with the shaker, you can drive up to 20 kilohertz and more, and you excite um, 3D dimensional um, modes, um, and actually on the on both pictures, you see that the mounting bracket is starting to move against the sensor at least. But again, this is in frequency regions far beyond the use case of the, of the sensor. And actually below this red line here on the left, uh, that's not happening too much. So the test program we've developed with Ewald um, was roughly based on a few discrete um, frequencies. Uh, so we chose 3, 10, 100, and 200 hertz. Should just have one point each um, to do some basic investigation. Is the sensor fit for the job? What's happening in three, in the three 
uh, directions. And um, we've, since we were on the beginning with the whole test stand, we also recognized some, some configuration um, issues, which we were able to, to solve now. So we also learned on this, uh, but the signals looked okay. Uh, we had some smaller resonances, which we can explain by now. Um, but what was really interesting that in the 200 Hertz uh, region, this signal got, got really bad and we didn't actually get much power in, in 200 Hertz, uh, but in regions where we didn't expect it. Um, and then also in 100 Hertz, uh, there was a lot of energy in, in much lower frequencies. Um, but we had a target. We said like, okay, we excite a, a certain amplitude. So the least thing that we should be able to measure is the same overall uh, root mean squared uh, power from the sensor. Um, so we directly compared this. We have the laser measurements uh, on top of the casing in uh, low frequencies that, that should be fine. Uh, we have an internal reference sensor in the shaker. And we have the reading directly from the move solution sensor. Um, so we can see on the left, there's a velocity. And if you um, differentiate the signal, you get acceleration, which is the driving um, factor, which we set up in the, in the shaker. And for low frequencies, that's, that's fine. That's really close uh, to, to the target. But then at 100 Hertz and 200 Hertz, the signal seems to break in. And that was the result I've um, reported back to, to Ewald and he was happy. He said like, yeah, in, we're interested in much lower frequencies though. So that's not an issue. And actually when preparing the slides for this webinar, um, Ambra provided me <laughs> with the very crucial information, which is the, the resolution for, for the entire test campaign that there is a, um, a working uh, order um, called the the Dean um, District uh, um, for uh, the mo vibration monitoring of buildings, and that actually limits the available or the monitored frequency range uh, to roughly one to one hundred or sixty three hertz. So that is the interesting uh, frequency range. So that was the proof that, of course, at 100 and 200 Hertz, we don't need and we don't get uh, a signal because it's not part of, of this uh, of this interested frequency regions. So basically that's that's a, a green light for, for the sensor. It uh, did exactly what it was expected to do. Um, this is a really rough test, so you could do much more experience. You could spend days and weeks in the test uh, in, the, in the lab and do lots of experiments. Um, and that's, of course, what we are up to whenever there is need and demand. Um, so I was yeah, very happy to, to conduct this test and conclude my last slide of contact details in case everyone needs it. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much, Martin, for providing us with these uh, very interesting insights and uh, studies on the vibrometer. Thank you, Matteo, for the explanation behind the model analysis that can be performed uh, with the accelerometer. And thank you, of course, everyone for staying with us and for your attention if you have some question you can just write it down into the box and we'll try to answer you at our best or absolutely there's no problem if you have a further question you can just uh, email them to me this is my contact so the private email or the info at moodsolutions.it. And of course, if you have uh, questions or you need for the service of the Fraunhofer Institute, you have 
the contact from uh, for um, from from Martin as well. So we have a question for Martin from you, Ugo Zampieri. Do you have the spec of the MEM sensor to compare with the results got through the test on the assembled solution? Um, I can directly try to answer this. Um, for this test, we didn't have the specs of the uh, integrated MEM sensors. Um, but of course, if we have, uh, that's a very nice uh, data point because you can directly target your expectations and, and prove or disprove the values mentioned in the, in the data sheet. But no, for this one, we didn't. But it's, you mentioned the assembled solution. Uh, so that's, that's part of the reason why we conduct such tests because the data sheet for MEM sensors when they come out of the production line have a very different mechanical property um, compared to when they are integrated in a, in a sensor, especially a heavy sensor like this. Uh, together with the casing, with the battery, with some complementary electronics, um, uh, maybe the the mountain brackets you've you've seen, so that can change everything, um, and that's exactly why we need to conduct those tests if you want to um, use those sensors in the in the field, especially for higher frequencies, of course. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Martin, for your reply. And I see that uh, Francois David uh, has the hand raised. Uh, I don't know if you can please write down the uh, the question into the, the box or if you prefer just to email it. In the meantime, we have another question from Hugo. For uh, LoRa communication, do you have a preferred network server to use with your devices? And yes, so basically our our architect our IT IT architecture is made like this. So each one we have a star system. So each one of the sensor communicates through the LoRaWAN protocol to our gateway. Then from our gateway with the 3G, 4G network, uh, using the SIM card, everything is sent to our network server, that is Loriot. All our IT architecture is built on, um, on them, on, sorry, on it. And then, of course, after the network server, we can uh, provide all the data on the IoT platform made by Move or through the APIs and QTT as well. So yes, we have a network server that we built everything on it. So Andy Bersley from uh, Terra Measurement, one of our uh, technical partners, asked something that I think Matteo can help me to answer. How swiftly does the dynamic sensor information reach the cloud-based platform? So, for example, how fast is real time? Um, are you talking about, I think, uh, about um, acceler acceleration data or um, uh, model parameter results? Because for the acceleration data uh, in uh, uh, yeah, acceleration and acceleration these. data uh, in probably a few minutes, uh, you can see all the acceleration data of the hour. And uh, so the, the, the sensors start to 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 acquire data. And after a few minutes uh, from between uh, five, three to 10 minutes, you have the data on uh, on cloud. Thank you very much. And uh, so we have another question from uh, Francois David. 
an idea of the battery duration, of course, depending on the number uh, usage. Yes, so basically when we are speaking about dynamic sensor like the one that we showed to you, we talking about um, four or five years in a normal situation, of course, more the samples, more the measure, less the duration. So maybe for example, for the DDS, that is a device that works by trigger. Of course, if the DDS has a very low threshold and takes uh, hundred of events per day, the battery will less will last uh, less. When we're talking about static, then uh, um, SHM, so our tilmeter or our maybe single channel node, we can go up to also eight years of course, depending on the schedule acquisition from the like the tilt sensor or the single channel node. Okay, just give it a sec. We have another question. How many sensors can you connect simultaneously from uh, Domenico Padovano? So uh, let's say that uh, there is a main difference between uh, static and dynamics, of course, because when we're speaking about dynamic sensor, the packages of data are uh, heavier than uh, static is, of course, much more heavier data, much more complex data. So uh, Matteo will help me, but I think that we can take like well, talking about static, uh, we can arrive to also 100 sensor, maybe a little bit more. Yes, it, 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 it also depends from how, um, how many uh, gateways uh, yeah. you will go to, 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 to put on, on, on the site, but yes. um, Yes, for, for static, we, we can go up to uh, uh, 50 or 60 static sensors uh, without problem. Um, yeah, maybe we, the export are also maybe having the gateway with the line of sight of the sensors or maybe yes. if it's a normal busy environment like the construction site, we can, ten, we can take maybe 50 to 60. If it is a railway application with a gateway mounted on the pole on the top with the line of sight, you can reach maybe six, 70, 80 sensor. And then yes. how Matteo told you, it depends of one, the number of the gateway and two, which type of gateway, because we provide two types of gateway, one that is eight channels and the other that is 16 channels. So being 16 channels, it can take more and more sensor that can be very important when maybe we have a dynamic application. Uh, yes, yes. For dynamic application, the the number of sensors for for one gate for a gateway is a little bit uh, lower. So uh, we can go up to with one gateway uh, to thirty. Uh, no, 20, 20, 20 uh, accelerometer. Yeah, and yes. a, lot, a lot more maybe with uh, 16 yes. channels. Yes. Then we have another question from uh, Luca Nardini. Any real world case studies such as bridges, building, etc.? Yes, of course, we have uh, plenty of real case study application. Uh, let's say that here in Italy, we are working a lot uh, with these dynamic devices on uh, bridges and uh, complex structure. We are working with this also in the UK with one of our technical partners in a very complex project uh, itself. So yes, we have case studies. I, uh, I, I, I don't have uh, in the presentation right now case study to show you, but I will follow up your request by email, sharing something with you. And I, of course, invite all to get on our website, the www.musolution.it to 
see uh, the um, case studies part of our website. And there you can find all our uh, published uh, case studies uh, for uh, static, dynamic, environmental, and uh, all the monitoring challenges that we can take with our system. Okay, I think we are done. Thank you very much for your attention. There were, were a lot of questions, so really, thank you. Thank you, Matteo. Thank you, Martin. Martin thank you all, thank you all. for the, the, the study. Thanks a lot for providing us with this very interesting case study. And thanks, thank to you for being here with us. Uh, I hope uh, everyone enjoyed this webinar and uh, for any question, anything you can write to me to info at MOOCsolution.it or to Martin. The, also the record of this webinar will be provided to you. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye. Bye, bye everyone.